In this video, I'm going to show you how you could build a $41 Tiam Luminous Enigma Commander deck. Let's get started. Quick disclaimer, the total cost of this deck is just under $41 as of the day of recording. Prices were checked using mtgstocks.com. However, that cost of $41 is excluding the commander as well as the basic lands in this deck. Tiam Luminous Enigma is a 4 to cast 3 3 that reads Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional vigilance counter on it. And then you may pay 3, remove 3 counters from among creatures you control, put the top 3 cards of your library into your graveyard, then return a permanent card with convert a mana cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So we're going to do two things with this deck. We're going to try to weaponize the counter portion. So we're going to try to get lots of counters on our permanents, namely creatures. And then also we're going to fill our deck chock full with permanents that cost three or less so that we have the most targets or lots of selection for Tiam to hit. We're going to start off by talking about the accelerants in this deck. We are running seven of them, which is quite low compared to most of my commander decks. However, Tiam is able to bring a lot of those cards back and we have quite a few accelerants in our lands that we are able to bring back. So in playtesting, that felt like the right number to run. Rampant Growth, Sakura Tribuilder, and Cultivate all help us to cheat extra lands to the battlefield early. We can also recur Sakura Tribuilder, remove his Vigilance counters that he's getting with Tiam, sack him to get extra lands. He's a good fit in this deck, as is he in most green decks. Fertilid is a creature who cares about plus one, plus one counters. You can remove them to cheat extra lands to the battlefield early. We have quite a few plus one plus one synergies in this deck, so he fits in well. As does Rishkar Pima Renegade, who turns all of your creatures with plus one plus one counters into mana dorks. So he gives you extra counters and he can also help ramp us out a little bit. Spring, Spring Bloom Druid allows us to cheat extra lands onto the battlefield early. And so does Wood Elves, who can help us get a forest. Usually you're going to want to try to get the Murmuring Bosque as it helps fix your colors, giving you all three of your colors. Unless, however, you do need an untapped source, as we are not running Tree Folk. So we'll use the Wood Elves to get a untapped forest should we need that one extra mana for that particular turn. As far as our game plan, we have 22 cards specific to our game plan. Three of those are Young Wolf, Butcher Ghoul, and Strangle Root Geist. All three of which have Undying, so after they die, they would come back with a plus one, plus one counter, which is great because then we can use Tiam to remove those counters and reanimate other things from our graveyard. Similar to Undying, we have creatures with Persist, such as the Putrid Goblin, Safehold Elite, and Kitchen Finks. But instead of coming back with a plus one, plus one counter, they return with a minus one, minus one counter, which doesn't really matter because you're going to use Tiam to remove them anyway. Notably, the Kitchen Finks helps us to gain a little extra life as well. Two of our best creatures that come back on their own are the Restless Apparition as well as the Renclaw Trow. The Apparition and Trow both have Persist. However, the Apparition we can pump plus three plus three by paying three Orzhov mana into it uh, in the form of white or black, three white, three black, one and two, or however, whatever combination you do. And then Renclaw Trow has Wither, so I ended up in playtesting using this kind of as an aggressive card to pick away at our opponent's life or force them into bad blocks. Because when a creature is dealt damage by the Trow, it gets a minus one, minus one counter, or two minus one, minus one counters if Renclaw Trow doesn't have a persist counter on it. Zulaport, Cutthroat, and Cruel Celebrant, as well as the Corpse Knight, all help us to weaponize all these creatures that are entering and dying and leaving the battlefield because they help us to drain our opponent's life and help us to gain some life as well. Into our more plus one plus one counters theme, we have Carrion Feeder, Scoop Mob, and Mortician Beetle, all of which are just going to grow and get bigger and bigger as the game goes on. We can also remove the counters off of them to help us reanimate more things. As does the Ravenous Slime, very similar. He is just gonna get bigger and bigger as the game goes on and also force our opponent into bad blocks because they can't block with their smaller creatures. They're gonna have to lose some of their mid to big size creatures if they do wanna block this or just take some damage. Good Fortune Unicorn helps all of our creatures to enter with a plus one plus one counter 
making them either bigger for combat or just allowing us to have more counters to remove for Tyam, as does the durable handicraft should we be willing to pay an extra one whatever creature would enter that creature enters with a plus one plus one counter on it as well we can also sacrifice the handicraft for six to put a plus one plus one counter on each of our creatures which is not really a big deal because we can just recur the handicraft with Tyam getting it back to the battlefield and then having pumped our whole team in the process. Evolution Sage as well as the Contagion Clasp allow us to proliferate either when a land enters the battlefield or if we're willing to pay four into it. Together Forever helps us protect our board. If we have a creature that we don't want to go to the bin, we can just pay one and as long as that creature has a counter on it, it ends up returning to our hand, which is great, especially for those creatures that cost less than three. So if it costs two or one and we has a counter, we can just return it to our hand so that we aren't paying the full three off of Tyam to get it back. Together Forever also gives up to two creatures plus one plus one counters when it enters. Angelic Renewal and Kaya's Ghost Form also help us to protect our creatures when they would die or be exiled. We can get them back out of the graveyard as long as we sacrifice these or our creature would leave, got Kaya's Ghost Form would go to the graveyard anyway. We get that permanent back by using Tyam, so we can make Tyam very hard to deal with, especially if it's Kaya's Ghost Form because exile or dies. So bouncing is maybe one of the best or most effective ways. We also have Spore Frog, which helps to protect us in that it gives us a recurrable fog effect. We can sacrifice it to prevent all combat damage to us. I have even used this when I didn't need to prevent combat damage just so I could get extra triggers off of my draining type creatures because I had nothing else to do with my mana, which is a good feeling. As far as interference, we have 18 cards that are going to help us interfere with our opponent's game plan, which is on the higher end. Most of those cards are going to be in the form of permanence. However, we do have some instant speed interaction. Flesh Mag Marauder, Merciless Executioner, and the Playcrafter all help us to remove our opponent's creatures in that they force our opponents to sacrifice creatures. Playcrafter is doubly good because if they don't have a creature, they're going to be sacrificing a Planeswalker or vice versa. And then if they don't have either of those, they're going to have to discard a card from their hand. More recurrable things, we have Journey to Nowhere, Deadly Designs, and Fiend Hunter. The journey is just going to sit on the table and remove a creature until we can either sacrifice it or it gets blown up by a board wipe. Deadly designs, however, we can bring back over and over again. We can proliferate the counters on it. We can remove the counters on it. It's great because it gives us somewhere to dump extra mana if we don't have time on the table or we just don't have three but we got two, we can use deadly designs. And then when we need it to, we can destroy two creatures with it, which is a good deal although it is pretty expensive 10 mana to get two creatures but you get to pay for it in increments which is nice fiend hunter is exceptionally good because he causes a lot of problems for your opponents especially the ones that are reliant on their commanders because you can get their commander tax up very high recurring this guy over and over so that instant speed interaction we have valorous stance abzan charm and go for the throat all of which help us to deal with problematic creatures Valorous Stance has the added addition of being able to make one of our creatures indestructible and the Abzan Charm we can either use to draw two cards and lose two life or distribute two plus one plus one counters among creatures we control if we don't want it for creature removal. In playtesting I only ever use Abzan Charm for creature removal with the exception of one game where I was going to miss a land drop on turn four so I used it to draw two cards and lose two life and luckily that game I did hit my land drop. Seal of Cleansing and Seal of Primordium help us to destroy artifacts and enchantments, as does the Reclamation Sage as well as the Thrashing Brontodon. Banishing Light, Oblivion Ring, and D-Spark help us to remove problematic permanents of any kind. Banishing Light and Oblivion Ring can be recurred over and over again, which is great. D-Spark has the downside that it can only hit permanents with a converted mana cost of 4 or greater. Sunblast Angel is going to destroy all tapped creatures, and Route's going to destroy all creatures, and they can't be regenerated. If we want, we can pay an extra 2 into Route to cast it at instant speed. 
For cards that provide consistency, we are running 11, which is also on the lower end. But in playtesting, I found that I was able to protect Tyem quite well. And he's just a consistency card in and of himself. He only costs 3 to use his ability, so it's not that expensive. Elvish Visionary, Mentor of the Meek, and Painful Truths. The elf enters and draws us a card. Mentor of the Meek is allowing us to pay an extra 1 to draw a card anytime a creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under our control. With so many creatures with a CMC of 3 or less, that is most of our creatures entering we're able to draw off of. And then Painful Truths, we can draw 3 cards and lose 3 life as long as we pay a white, green, and black into it. Grim Harrowspecs and Midnight Reaper allow us to draw cards when our creatures die. And then Splinter Fright was the hardest card for me to categorize. I ended up putting it under consistency because he gives us card selection. And the reason he gives us card selection is because at the beginning of our upkeep, we mill the top two cards of our library. Therefore, our recurring reanimating cards have better card selection to choose from because our graveyard is bigger. He's also great because he's an XX with Trample, where X is equal to the number of creature cards in our graveyard, which ends up being quite a lot as the game gets deeper and deeper or goes farther into the game. Mimic Vat is great because it allows us to copy one of our creatures that has an Enter the Battlefield effect. Even if it's on Wood Elves, being able to get a Forest every single turn for 3 mana is a pretty good deal. And you can also use it on your opponent's creatures that have really big effects too. Tyam is obviously a consistency card because you're able to reanimate something for three every single turn. He gives you better card selection. Really strong commander here. And then we have Soul of Innistrad who works kind of as a backup for if Tyam is not on the battlefield. He's been removed too many times. We can't pay his commander tax. Soul of Innistrad allows us to return creatures from our graveyard to our hand so that we can recast them again. Lastly, for consistency, we have the Death Reap Ritual, which is going to draw us a card each turn that a creature died, and the Molder Vine Reclamation, which draws us a card and gains us a life anytime one of our creatures dies. Next up, we're going to talk about the lands. We are running 41 of them. We have the Grim Backwoods, which gives us a sacrifice outlet, allowing us to get those cards in our graveyard should we need their Enter the Battlefield effect again. Guild Mages Forum, which allows us to get plus one plus one counters on our multicolored creatures, and Tectonic Edge, which allows us to deal with our opponent's problematic lands. Do note that Tyam can return lands to the battlefield for you, so you can use Tectonic Edge over and over again if you need to. Perfect. Murmuring Boss, we already mentioned, I'm putting it here again because we have Cross on Verge in this deck, which allows us to fetch a forest and a plains to the battlefield tapped. The two that you want to pick are going to be Murmuring Boss and the Mistvale Plains if they're not on the battlefield already. Mistvale Plains is great because it allows us to put those instants back on the bottom of our library. We have quite a few ways of being able to shuffle our deck. So if you need one of those back again, you can improve your chances of getting it with a Mistvale Plains. Other cards that fetch us lands, we have Ash Barrens, Blighted Woodland, Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, and Myriad Landscape which help us to color fix and we can recur them with Tyam. We also have Command Tower and Sandstep Citadel, which give us all three of our colors. Golgari Rot Farm, Tainted Wood, Temple of Malady, which give us black green. Temple of Plenty, Selesnia Sanctuary, which give us green white. Orzhov Basilica, Caves of Koilos, and the Tainted Field, which give us white black. And then we are running eight forests, six swamps, and six plains. The average converted mana cost of this deck was 2.64. As you can see, it's on the very low end because we have very few cards that are above three in our converted mana cost. Here are a few cards I would consider if I were to go above that $1 price point. If you wanna see some more ideas, check out the link in the description below. Better yet, share your thoughts in the comments what card you would upgrade with. That way, others can see your brilliant ideas and alter to their liking. If you liked the video, you should give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. If you do, make sure you ring the bell so you don't miss any of the new weekly content from Budget Commander. Otherwise, you can check out the video in the top right or either of the playlists on the bottom.